transition <laughs> to the conversation about what is inside the budget, and it's a four trillion budget, four point zero zero six trillion. That's what the uh, Parliament approved as the report of the budgetary. Budget and Appropriations Committee, many allocations. The national government received 2.39 trillion shillings. Of this, uh, judiciary gets 24.6 billion, parliament 44.6 billion, executive 2.3 trillion, and so many allocations going to different uh, departments, including um, defense. State House, State House will be getting 9.5 billion shillings. The executive office of the president will get 5.1 billion shillings. <coughs> what is the difference? State House and Executive Office of the President? I, I will not claim to know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a, the, what, what would normally happen is uh, Treasury does allocate uh, 48 for different offices. So it looks for, for State House, they have decided to allocate uh, uh, the, the Executive Office of the President a 48 and, uh, and the State House itself afforded. But I can tell you for sure the two are under the management of the, the accounting officers the control of State House for the two. Hmm. Mm. The, 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 so why separate? Um, what is that difference? Because also the Office of the Deputy President is also uh, funded. It's uh, 4.8 billion shillings. Because I, I thought that uh, the office of the president is is isolated from state house, and that is why office of the president you have a separate peers. Uh, no, it's the executive. And, unless it, now you're it, talking about because state house now the the, the 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 who will be the peers of state house will be the state house controller. Mm -hmm. If it is office of the president, then there are other structures also in office of the president that involves, you know, the the, the peers. So who is the peers of the executive office of the president? It's, it's Kato. It's a That's what I said, those two forte. <laughs> <laughs> Forts are, are under the same accounting <laughs> officer. And I was saying that because the interior ministry is also of finance, because if you have to say it's PS or Molo, yeah, that's now Molo. the interior has 35.8 um, billion shillings. Yeah. Immigration is funded separately. Um, anyway. What are you supposed to think about as when you look at the spending of four trillion shillings and you've seen the revenue targets are now at 2.9 trillion shillings, so leaves a gap of about 1.1 trillion shillings. I don't know what you're learning, Alex, from the trends in budget making because you continue to go higher and higher. Income, more def deficits, of course, have to be financed through borrowing. What should you be thinking of? Um, I happened to have a look at a report that was being done by the Auditor General. And the Auditor General was basically comparing our expenditure vis-a-vis -vis how much we are collecting over a period of five years, from 2018 to 2022. Um, if I could break it down, 2018-2019, um, uh, in terms of revenue at 1.5 trillion, 2019-2020, 1.6, uh, the following year, again, 1.6. Then 2021, 2022, 1.9. 2022, 2023, 2 trillion. And with the current year, I think I was there when I was mentioning that as at April, we were at 1.7 trillion in terms of collection. Mm. Give or take, we close the year at about 2 trillion. So now you then say we will finance budget of 4 trillion with 2.9 trillion from taxes. Where is that money going to come from? If anything is to go by, you are actually telling us that you'll collect, an, okay, if, last, if this year you do 2 trillion, you, will, you have measures to collect an extra 900 uh, billion, um, which I think is not, realistic and I think even the Auditor General just recently was cautioning the government and saying mm -hmm. you have a very ambitious budget and going by these projections in terms of our revenue collection right. we will not be able to finance it uh, properly. What then that means is that fine you already have a deficit of about 700 uh, billion assuming we even get to that 2.9 trillion in terms of revenue collection but if you we are realistic and then you collect in this coming year, you only collect another just two trillion. It means you have a 900 uh, billion uh, deficit, actual or perceived. Mm -hmm. Then you have to add the 700, meaning you are starting off at a 1.6 trillion uh, deficit to finance a 4 trillion 
budget. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> that speaks to me in terms of additional borrowing. And I think even the Auditor General has just called it as such. Um, she sees us uh, borrowing a lot, again, from external parties and also uh, locally, which will push our debt um, higher. And, and ch ch oh, sorry, <laughs> Vice Chair, mm -hmm. but also member budget committee. Um, we keep moving and including just the past convers the previous conversation we just had about uh, Kenyans are suffering exchequer releases are delayed mm. through this process of uh, making the budget and the public participation that you may have uh, happened to sit, uh, sit in why do we keep going for higher figures yet we cannot finance them we cannot even get the cash flow to uh, go into the exchequer releases a, a, a very good question, uh, uh, Sam. You know, Sam, the, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, if you give, even at the individual level, if you are given a chance to say what you want, mm. you always list more things than, than what you can afford. And uh, my argument has always been, as a country, both the experts and even the public, we've been so keen on where the money will come from yeah. And no, not so keen on where the money will be applied. If the same energy we have applied to the finance bill, mm. and you have seen all the way from last week, yeah. if we applied a quote of that energy, in asking the question you have just asked me and the coach, the question of what is the difference between the executive office of the president and the state house? Mm. <laughs> now, the question of us is, the, is the, now the most important question. Where are we applying our money to? Because if we took a bit of time as a country and our experts uh, took time to, look, to, to, to go through the budget item, item by item, I'm telling you, Sam, you would be surprised. You might find that we have a lot of expenditure, proposed expenditure items which are not core, what I call core, core priority expenditure items. Mm -hmm. And if we are to get rid of that, now, we will be answering the question you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are trying to ask me, but let, let me put it in simple terms. What is happening is the projected revenue for the next financial year, that we call it ordinary revenue. That's from now the taxes, the levies, the excise tax and all that mm -hmm. is 2.9. Mm -hmm. But there's another 400 billion of, uh, of A in A the money you, you, you get as a result of government providing services and goods where people pay for those services. So, so currently the, the, the deficit will be coming to around 500 plus mm -hmm. in terms of what is expected to be borrowed. But we have said many times we are ambitious in terms of our revenue projection. Of ambitious. Why am I saying that? From what uh, 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 Wakili has read through here, last year we had two, two tri uh, trillion in terms of correction. 2.16. Yeah, currently. Uh, we've seen it and it has been confirmed that we fall short of our projected collection by about 300 billion. We'll project to collect about 2.5 trillion. We'll fall short by 300 billion, which means we'll come down to about 2.26. 2 mm -hmm. Then we are projected to collect 2.9, I think 2.92 trillion. Mm. If you look at that gap, the initial gap was about 400. Now, because of shortfall in terms of collection, it has been pushed to, be, to a gap of 700 billion. So this year, even though the finance bill talks about 3 or 2 billion, we are supposed to collect in total 700 billion so that we, we get to the, to the figure of 2.9. Mm -hmm. Because we use our, base, our baseline figure as 2.52. Mm -hmm. But we are we actually going to collect 2.2 something. So automatically it tells you that what? We are already starting with a gap, which we've not factored into our budget. So don't be surprised, uh, supplementary one, seeing another revision downwards. And the challenge we have been facing, and we have said it openly, and I think it's important Kenyans is not this. The, the challenge we have is when it comes to these reductions, you realize that what, we are reducing more of development budget than the current budget. For example, the supplementary budget, which was signed, which was signed yesterday by the president. Right. We reduced about 71 billion development budget and increased 51 billion recurrent budget. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are economists, we have said, by doing that, you, you, are, not, you, are, you are denying development, uh, developments in this country and pushing more money to recurrent. And you're not likely to grow the economy in such a situation. So, so my, my appeal would be, it, 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 is, it, it feels good, it sounds good to have a, billion, a, two, a four trillion budget, you know? Kenya has a four billion, uh, bought 
trillion budget. When you combine Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda, we are not likely even to get to that level. So it feels good. But can we be realistic? So that we have a budget which we can fund and have enough cash to finance the budget. I believe from where I see that budget, what we read, uh, which, what is going to be read by the minister on Thursday, mm -hmm. are proposals, intentions. Should, but budget is not about intentions. Budget is about implementation. And these are the questions we were asking earlier. Why would you have give the, the, the retired president 500 million in the books and then only provide about 100 million in reality? So it means we are, over, we are over ambitious, we are not realistic. And this was also picked by the control of bu by budget. Uh, she says, the way we are doing our things is what makes budget monitoring very difficult for, for her. Right. Because we, we, we put a lot of figures there, when it comes to actual implementation, we are not implementing. And then we are not likely even to realize the intended benefits as a result of budget implementation. And to me, these are the hard questions. So I would really wish that uh, as Kenyans, we spend much more time looking at the expenditure items, what, what this money is being So, so if, if, if this ambition is too unrealistic, is it possible at parliamentary level to cut out some of these things? <laughs> There's something we have done at parliament level. <clears throat> you know, through the advice of IMF and World Bank, Kenya moved from uh, the itemized way of bu budget to programmatic budget. We call it program budgets. Program budgets, uh, Chairman uh, Koech will tell you, when they come to us, they don't now bring to parliament mm -hmm. the details of what will be done, but with what money. They bring programs. Like now we could have a program, a foreign affairs program in this, in this committee, which is given 10 billion. So you, it's only him who tells us these are the activities as he's presenting. But even f for, from where he sits as a chairman, he doesn't have the nitty gritty in terms of what, what is the line item. Yeah. That's why we are saying, how oh, I wish our experts were able now, because we move from itemized budget to program budget. So parliament only d d discusses program budget. And if you, are, you watched our, our la last Thursday debate, uh, yeah. uh, Sam, mm. where well, we are now supplying money, we call it committee of supplies. Yeah. It will be read, obviously the president, this program, this much, we pass. But the details were not coming to parliament. So that's why I'm saying, the way our, our think tanks are taking so much time to look at the finance bill and do analysis and tell us these are the implications, why can they take as much time to look at the expenditure items and blow it, uh, push it to Kenyans and tell them out of the money we are, but, we are but but to. But Shuman, I want to also move to Honorable Koech. Yes. When you're looking at the finance bill, yes. it's easy because you are amending a certain clause or section in a certain act of parliament. Yes. You go look at it and look at the implication because yes. they are the one, the, the business people are in business, they can see that. That's true. When you come to look at the budget, you're to telling us about a, a program budget. Budget. Yes. Even you yourselves as members of parliament don't have those details. Yeah, we don't have, we, so because they come program by program. Even our experts, how are they supposed to analyze it? No, you know, there's, 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 there's that, Sam, let, let me help you. Yeah. There's that big book, you saw it, it's called Printed Estimates, Development Recurrent. Mm. The big book. Mm -hmm. That big book has all the details. It's only that now it's only produced by at the pressure level. Initially, the big book would even be brought to parliament and members would be able to scrutinize this completely and say, so that's what I'm saying. If you pick that book, even you, you'll be able to see like now, for example, how much goes to the, to the what, what is the salary of this? Like, you remember the, the, the debate about the, the renovation of the deputy president's office? You remember that debate? Yeah. Now, if you go to that book, it will show you the details, how much has been allocated for each item. Mm. And we can start asking the hard questions. Do we need to do this? Just as Koichi was saying earlier, there are things you can push to the next year so that we have a realistic budget. There are things you can say these are not necessary now. We can actually live without them. Mm. For example, and this, this has happened, anytime you visit most of our offices, parliament, government, offices, even judiciary, you realize there are these uh, live flowers which are kept in all corners. There are times you go to a meeting, there are these snacks. Like our, our meetings normally, there are lots of snacks there. And at the end of the day, you find even people who don't have time to, to, to take them. So, but the fact that they have been allocated, you pay for them, you see? So as I'm saying, there are a few things you can do. Okay. Just tune to our expenditure items and have the budget and get a realistic budget. Okay. Yes. Oh, all right. But, but before I close, yeah. the other thing which you have not addressed, and this is what I must say, uh, no, is no, also I, the corruption issue. I'll get back to you. I promise you. Horrible So, what do we do with this? Because it, it appears that um, 
a lot of Kenyans don't have visibility of the nitty gritties of the budget making process, yet we have to fund it because, yes, he says that whatever the cabinet secretary will be presenting on Thursday are aspirations. Uh, but then again, it's been close to nine months of debate to an extent that it is very difficult to change anything even now. It will get more difficult because, uh, number one, uh, Sam, is that we've continued to carry over debt. So every regime that has come in has loaded uh, more debt on the population. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming, and that is why even this budget, most of this budget, if you see, most of, a lot of money is going to repayment of debt. Okay. Uh, you, you remember just at the beginning of the year we had uh, to pay the euro bond. And I'm sure we will keep paying it. We will keep paying it. There is also syndicated loans that we've borrowed from elsewhere mm -hmm. that is trying now to uh, fund the gap that we have in the budget, uh, the budget that we have. Mm -hmm. So for as long as we have this, it will extremely become difficult. And then the question is, will you? And, and it, it is in every regime, and even we as politicians, even the members of parliament, you really want to make a change, and governors also want to make a change. Right. So the question should be. Is there a way that we can structure our borrowing so that it is geared towards a particular item? For instance, today, many Kenyans are paying for the expressway. Some of those Kenyans don't even use the expressway, but yet they have to suffer the consequence of paying for that expressway. Are they paying for it? In taxes. It's a loan that was taken. Every Kenyan, it is spread to every Kenyan. So I, thought it was, I thought it was PNP, so the developer is recovering their money. Mm, P, 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 P. Yeah, yeah, oh, let, let me leave out that one. But there are these ones that we've taken loans, uh, you know, for, to, to do the construction of the loans. But Kenyans are also paying if they're using that road anyway. But even the lower ones, on many other roads that we've taken loan for. Some of the roads. You could use the SGR maybe? Some of the, lo some of the roads you don't. The even the SGR actually, yeah, that is SGR. the biggest loan that we have. <laughs> so many people uh, pay it. I'm paying. I don't <coughs> use SGR because the SGR doesn't go all the way to Kericho. But you see, we all have to pay. So the question will be. Surely, well, surely. No, 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 I'm just <laughs> using it. You don't just go to Kericho, you go to many places. <laughs> yeah, it's many places. But, but, but I mean, if someone, like pro probably my mother, might not understand why she has to pay taxes for an SGR that she doesn't even see. Mm. So those are some of the questions we should ask at Kenya. So I looked at the budget. And let me go to the agencies that, that, that we oversight, mm -hmm. that, that I chair. And I, and I appeared before their committee. There are so many things in that budget that are extremely necessary, yet they have been pushed from year after year. For instance, um, we recently lost uh, General uh, Ogola. Mm -hmm. It puts to the question on you know, the, the, the kind of facility that we have in, in the military, whether it was, it was an accident or not. Then, then we have this debate of, well, I mean, it was an accident. We have this debate that can we now look at the kind of, 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 of aircraft that we have as a country? You, you know what has happened in Malawi uh, last night. Hmm. So that we have to modernize our equipment. The military must continue, continuously modernize the equipment. But when you appear before Daktari's uh, budget committee, they will tell you, no, this is not urgent. What we need right now is water for our people. This is what we've promised. What we need right now are roads. That is what we promised. So as a country, we continue. Yet the budget for KDF or Defense Department has been growing over and over again. This when you year, see the budget you're proposing of growing, it, is billion. Not, it is not largely. Actually, 70% of the budget of KDF is personnel and emoluments. That, that is where it goes. If you look at modernization of acquiring new fleets, we've gone to an extent of where you've seen recently where the president was beginning mm. to get uh, 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 some of the vehicles, uh, these APCs, from the US. It's mm -hmm. because as a country, we are not even able at some point to purchase. It is, they are very expensive. And looking at how our budget is at the moment and trying to make sure that there's a lot of saving, that is where uh, the country is heading. So there is so much. Sometimes you look at that budget, really, and when you go to the details, there isn't much that has been factored in. You had uh, Honorable Kipchum Mamurkomen say that he is expecting, I mean, he owes uh, contractors $150 billion in the entire infrastructure sector, yet he was allocated $42 billion. So look at the gap. How will you then uh, meet all these expenses at the same time still spread out? It was allocated $42 billion for what? For the entire infrastructure sector, for roads? No, much more. Yes. Roads have 199 billion shillings. 199 billion, but now what, what specifically for roads? You're talking about Ministry of Transport, Roads and Transport. 
Uh, no, I'm telling you, the roads department has been allocated 199 billion. Well, Nino, what is needed is? Uh, he says billion. that 37 billion shillings. No, no, no. The damage is 37 billion. Yes. Against a demand of 42 billion. Uh -huh. So all those differences that you get Sorry, there. Sorry, what is the damage and what is the demand? What he has in budget to cater for El Nino is 42. It is it's 37. Uh -huh. But what they needed was 42. I'm just using the Ministry of Transport for, okay. for example. Mm -hmm. In the uh, Ministry of Defense, they had made a request of 48 billion for what we call ECA funding, external credit uh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. But all they got was 1 billion. So it tells you that even what they needed to modernize, they cannot. Yet you find that the budget still is growing to 4.1 trillion. So mm -hmm. what has grown this budget is for sure the debt that has been rolling over the years and the financial years. I'm trying to pull out some data on what you've just said about um, um, the expenditure in the defense ministry, just to check how much is for capital expenditure and how much is uh, uh, for recurrent expenditure. So I'll find it, but Alex, so of course, when it comes to debt, there's financing, uh, servicing the debt itself, if you're paying interest or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you have debt redemptions. Mm -hmm. And usually debt redemptions are not in the budget, the outside. No. They are. They are also, they are also yes. in the budget. Yeah. Does the four trillion shillings include redemption? Yeah, yes. it does. The, the, the borrowing, the borrowing of uh, the, the deficit includes redemptions and new uh, interests. Uh, debt repayment has two components: uh -huh. interest and then redemptions. Yeah. Yes. So I want to understand: in this, out of these four trillion shillings, mm. how much is going to um, debt redemption? How much is going to the interest? Now, in terms of the, uh, the total budget yeah. for um, public debt repayments is about 1.8, I think, 1 trillion. 1.8 trillion. That, that is for both interest and the redemptions. Yeah. But the interest is 1 trillion, 1.008 trillion. That's uh -huh. the interest. Okay. So, and I think that from what uh, Chairman Koichi was saying, mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems we have is actually debt repayment. Because if you look at those figures, uh, uh, Sam, mm -hmm. 1.8 something trillion out of a budget of, of 2.9 trillion order revenue is almost around 70 percent. Mm. So for every 100 shillings you collect as a country, 70 goes to the debt repayment. Now, out of that 70, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, 1.00 trillion out of the 2.9 is another almost another like that something percent. I just almost eating 50 percent. So you can see the kind of money, most of the money we are collecting goes to paying of debt and interest payment. Right. So what it means is you have very, uh, very inflexible fiscal space. Mm. Yeah. Because you only remain with 30 shillings to apply to all these other things. And that's, uh, that's where the challenge is. So issues of public debt is an uh, issue which we should, as a nation, uh, get to a national conversation. The other issue is issue of corruption, because outer general every time is giving us reports which indicate that Corruption is still a major problem in this country where we are losing about 30% of our budgets mm -hmm. to, to either misdirection or <coughs> people pocketing the money. Which means basically if we are to sort out the issue of corruption and our debt repayments, mm -hmm. then automatically we will be able to, to, to sort most of our financial challenges. All right, so I got it, Mashuma um, Koech. And um, so the Minister of Defense, 173 billion shillings is the total uh, proposed allocation or rather, what was approved. Mm -hmm. And out of that, 171.5 is recurrent expenditure. And 171.5 billion shillings is, it's written current. I bet this is recurrent yeah, expenditure. Current expenditure. Mm -hmm. And then capital expenditure is 1.5 mm -hmm. billion shillings only. You see? Yes. Alex, what do we do? Um, you know, you asked a question to Mweshimiwa here in terms of what they are doing in Parliament. Mm -hmm. And um, I, f I was tempted to look at um, Article 95 of our Constitution and before that, Article 94. Mm -hmm. So he's asking, why can't experts give the same energy to um, the budget process the same way they give it to finance bill? And um, I just respond in two ways. One is that, um, I'll give credit to Honorable Kuria's team in terms of inviting the public to actually give comments. They actually <coughs> go out of their way to not only just put an advert in the papers, they will 
say we know you as, say, a tax expert, and we have this thing coming, could you please come and give us your comments? I don't know whether the Committee for Budget actually has the same approach, because if it were to do that, then perhaps even um, some of these experts um, would appear. But that said, we, can all, we cannot, as the people, do oversight mm. of um, um, you know, the, the government and especially the executive who are spending our money. Because we have actually delegated that responsibility to, to parliament. With Article 4, we are just saying that the, leg the legislature, 94-1, the legislat le legislative authority of the republic is derived from the people and at the national level is vested and is exercised by parliament. So as a people, we first give it to parliament. Then when you go to Article 95 of the same constitution, and especially Article 95.4c, it is the role of the National Assembly to exercise oversight over the national revenue and its expenditure. So we have a lot of expectation uh, on you, Mweshimiwa, and the committee that is dealing with budget to actually exercise that power on our behalf to the best way um, possible because we cannot all appear. And maybe to solutions, when we look at our um, revenue projection and say we're only going to collect 2.9 trillion, mm -hmm. why can't we as a first <coughs> step Mm -hmm. say that our budget will be 2.9 trillion. Then we look at, this was our location for the previous year. Out of the budget that we had, 10% say went to security. 2% went to another government agency. Another one went to another program in terms of percentages. Then we say this is what then we use as the baseline to say, this is the much we can be able to afford. These were the ratios that we used in the previous year. These are the ratios we are going to, allo to use for, uh, to match to the revenue we are able to collect. Right. And then have a discussion, because there could be other externalities, mm. with anyone who says that we need more money uh, to finance an activity or a program. And even with them, when you're having that discussion, we tell them it means we are going to remove some allocated Rev, uh, money to a certain particular department to be able to allocate this as opposed to just adding numbers to get to the four trillion when for sure we know we won't have enough money uh, to be able to support that. such. But I'm also looking at because if the national government is getting there is the executive 2.3 trillion shillings and out of that 1.6 trillion shillings is recurrent meaning development is just over 748 billion shillings. So this 1.6 trillion, is there a way of reducing it? Because it's recurrent, yes, but much of it is actually personal emolument. Is it time we have that difficult conversation? Maybe, <laughs> and maybe we start with the MPs <laughs> in good faith. So that they tell us, we have looked at the budget uh, and we have seen that we are not able to take care of it. And uh, we have volunteered as MPs to take a pay cut of about 20%. And we expect that the other offices and government agencies will uh, reciprocate. And therefore, we are within budget. Uh, is that likely to happen? Uh, I'll let them uh, tell us. How does that sound, Hona <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass the baton back to Gary. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, Sam, uh, we, we are not running away from our responsibility from yeah. what uh, Kanye is saying. Mm -hmm. uh, we are saying, just yes, as members of parliament, we do conduct public participation, mm -hmm. basically. Even by, actually, for budget, we do it twice. Mm -hmm. Because the executive does it, uh, and the parliament does it, public participation. But the reason why we are calling on the think tanks, uh, Sam, yep. is what you have seen, the, the value addition you have seen the, in the finance bill. Because if you have seen the way, the, like the uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the way they are presented, <coughs> if you look at the presented by Kenya breweries, you could see it was a very well-researched thing. We are saying as members of parliament, we may not have that capacity to go into those, because we are not practitioners, we are not day to day. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, if we are to benefit from the same, that uh, these are the people who are fin financing the budget, mm -hmm. can they also do such a research in terms of where their, their resources are being applied? Mm -hmm. Because if that no, in that case then, if we really restricted our, our expenditure items to the, what we call the core expenditure items, more likely some will be able to reduce the deficit. And by reducing the deficit, then it means we'll start borrowing less, and to some extent we'll start addressing the issue of public debt. Because you know the reason why we borrow is because of the deficit. 
if we are able to balance our budget so that whatever we collect is what we implement, we don't need to borrow. Yeah. And then we'll have a situation where we start just paying old debts. And with the time, we'll have no debt. But no, now we are piling the debt up. You remember when the, when the Kenya Kwanza government came, on, uh, came into place, the promise that was that we are not going to borrow more. Mm. But the reality is now downing on them that they have no choice. They have to borrow. And so, actually, we're also borrowing to pay. Yeah, yeah, to pay even a, to, to some extent recurrent expenditure. So, so that, that's why we are saying, I, I wish we, we, we focused more on that, that side of the equation, the expenditure side. Okay. So that we start asking the other question, where is this man being applied? And I'm, I'm telling you for sure, the, 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 time I, the, the little time I take to scan through the budgets, I can easily tease out the items you can say. This one my, my, can even wait to, for some other time. Okay. The other thing is from where we sit as, uh, as politicians, and that's why now this is what Kanye needs to pick, mm -hmm. is that uh, you, you, you realize that other than just doing the work profession as a, as a, as a member of parliament, mm -hmm. there are other externalities, as he calls them. That's the terminology used in economics, yep. where, where also the politics of the day come into play. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you for sure. Anytime you talk to us, members of parliament, including the Kenjokwanza members of parliament now, from what the public is saying, the mood is saying no to this thing. That is the mood, you can see it. And we know it from where we sit. But don't be surprised to go to the parliament and find by the, the 14th day, things have changed. Because there are also considerations. You know, uh, Honorable Koechi and the Kenyakwanza team promised Kenyans also to deliver. And they know if they don't deliver, 2027 is going to be tricky for them. So, so there are a number of things to consider, and that's why you see at times you want to say no, but then you consider those other factors. And that's what we say, if Kenyans can come out in big numbers the way they have done the finance bill, yeah. and be able to say, why are we spending on this? Why are we spending on this? So that even the public pressure itself also could start also coming to play to ensure that we get the right expenditure items into our budgets. That will help this country. Okay, interesting. I, I got the number for uh, roads. So the plan is to spend 199 billion shillings, like I had mentioned. Um, but out of that, the capital expenditure is 127 billion shillings. The recurrent is 72 billion shillings. I don't know how that figure helps in the conversation you are talking about uh, repairing what has been affected by floods versus where we need to go as a country. You must include that, you must, you must remember that there is a huge debt also that it is owed to contractors in the Ministry of Road. Pending debt. Actually, the pending bill in Ministry of Road is the biggest issue at the moment. And that is where you see many contractors have downed their tools because they're not working. But pending bills, yet those resources have been factored in in previous budgets. But, but you're loading place. in debt as well. And, and that is why I was asking, I mean, why do you keep budgeting? If you're, why budget for 4 trillion shillings if you can't get there. But actually, just explain that every government has its plan. It's, you know, every administration wants... wants but the plan is, is not you, working. You promised an electorate that you want to do this. You know, you remember when this government came, the other uh, jubilee came in, it was, you know, doing low seal volume road, 10,000 kilometers that was supposed to have been done. You must leave to your manifesto so you don't look like you're corny. So in the process, it becomes extremely competitive. So you have competing interest between the revenue that we collect as a country and what we have to spend, it becomes extremely difficult at that point. I, I think what I'm asking is, if you have a road that could actually do very well with, um, not tarmac, but mm. what is the other grid? You might know. Is it maram or something like Grading. that? <laughs> Why do you have to spend so much money on bitumen, yet there's an alternative? There isn't much bitumen, if you look at it now, actually. What, what, we, what I think the ministry, I'm not, I'm, I don't know if I minister, but just general view as a legislator, is that uh, what I think the government will probably do at the moment is first of all to settle all the pending bills before they can start new processes and even engage further on PPP, like what you saw the president did the other day in the US, mm. uh, all the way from Mombasa to Nairobi. It helps in uh, 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 fiscal consolidation and then you can have money and lower the, the borrowing. Mm. I think that as a country is what, what would, probably would be. Would you have any information if there was a feasibility study on that? road from Mombasa to Nairobi? That road has been there for a very long time. I'm certain there was feasibility study uh, that had been done. Feasibility study yeah. to make a case it for been on the public private for partnership. a long time. And you remember, I think even before um, the US came in, 
there was Korea, there was China that had expressed interest and many other countries. I'm asking that because we have had conversations in this country about the expressway, yeah. the saying of how the cost used to move from, I think, upwards of 60 billion shillings to now. I don't know what, what it has settled. But like PPP, like you said, like the one that you just said of, uh, the, 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 the one from the airport, what is it called? The expressway. The expressway. Yeah. I mean, if you are not removing any money, it's, it's the best way that you can... You but can. there are clauses that if they, uh, the... Uh, the, contract. the contractor is not able to recover their money, mm. it becomes a debt. The best will be tolling, so that you know you, people who use the road up pay for it, and, and people are provided with alternatives. And therefore the question, is there a feasibility study to toll a road from Mombasa to Nairobi? I am not certain, but I am certain by the time that has been uh, signed, the Attorney General must have been involved, and other stakeholders must have been involved. <sighs> All right. Um, you must remember, Kenya has become an extremely litigious country. You cannot enter into such agreements without making sure that you follow the law and the due process. Yet it still happens. Let's listen to what the Deputy President said recently as we close um, about uh, the, a conversation that has been going on. Oh, is it one, one man, one shilling, one vote? Listen. Senator Akona Maoni. Governor Akona Maoni. Kila mtu wako na maoni. Hakuna vita. Tutaketi chini tujadiliane. Wale wanasema one man, one vote, one shilling. Wanasema one man, one vote, one kilometer. Hii maoni yote ni nzuri. Na hakuna vita. Probably because ile maoni nimetoa. Inaonekana kama inapendeza pahali ya watu pahali nimetoka. Unasema huyu is a tribalist. Sasa na shangaa ni meona jana Raila Odinga. Mwishimiwa Prime Minister, amesema the same thing, nilisema. Si jaona ameitua tribalist. Nimeona yuji ni wamalu, amesema the same. Si jaona ameitua tribalist. Lakini pia yao ni maoni. All right, anasema ako na maoni. I want to take very... <laughs> maoni ya haraka haraka. <laughs> um, your, your take on this issue, Dr. <clears throat> Mulu, about sharing of resources. And we were just mm. spoken about the budget and realizing the challenges that we have, mm. even in financing our budgets. Mm. Where should that settle? Uh, you know, if you, if you look at Chapter 12 of the, our constitution, uh, Sam, it is very clear in terms of how public finances must, could be used. One of them, there must be prudent use of the resources. The, one, the other one which is critical is that there should be equity as you use these resources. And, and it, it's the component of equity which brings in what, what this debate. Uh, by law, the Commission of Revenue Allocation is mandated to, to, to originate uh, the formula which determines how much is to be shared. Mm -hmm. And this would normally come to the Senate where it will be discussed and then uh, approved. So, to me, I think the argument of just one man, one vote uh, is not sufficient. As an economist, that is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Because in this country, 80% of our, our, our land mass is almost like what we call hustle. And you realize that in terms of uh, settlement, mm -hmm. even though there, we might have no, not many very people there, but that is a critical part of our country. And if we are talking about national unity, then we must come up with a way of a sharing formula which also factors in those other factors. Like us, from where we come from, we would want one kilometer included. So that in addition to what they are saying, <laughs> one kilometer is... Because we have huge chunks of land, for example, Kitui County alone, is 30, over 30,000 square kilometers. That's one county. Which, can you, if you look at the almost, I think even the whole of central Kenya <laughs> might not even be <laughs> to that level. So, so we are saying, if you went yeah, by, by just one man, we know resources are normally shared in like, terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, developing uh, for human beings. Right. But all said and done, I think, uh, Sam, uh, that kind of argument to me, I said, is very selfish. Selfish. And from where I come from, as we can't support it, because we are also Kenyans and we, we believe all parts of this country should be developed all to right. some extent equitably. Okay. And you know, if you remember the system so of equitably paper. Equitably means based on need. The, the thing is, based on, not, not really need. You know, equity means that uh, consider the fact, like now that's why we have a, a marginalization, a, you call it what? Uh, equalization fund. Equalization fund. Yeah. Uh, appreciating the fact that as a result of the system of paper, number one of 1965, <laughs> some parts of this country were not able to be developed as the others mm. because the paper was saying develop where they are high potential. 
So it is on the basis of that then equalization fund was allowed in the constitution so that we allow other areas to catch up the rest of the country. Mm. I think if we go this direction, then we continue marginalizing other parts more than they are. And we are saying, as some of us who come from those areas, will be saying no to this, this kind of proposal. Okay. Yeah. Alex, what's your take on this? Uh, myself, is, we have um, offices set up in the constitution. So when you speak about the Commission of Revenue Allocation, um, it's expected that it is an in independent office. Mm. So um, I think they should listen to both sides. You have the team talking about um, you know, the kilometers and that being considered. You have the team talking about one, the population basically um, getting considered. So um, we should leave it to the Commission of Revenue Allocation to then to attach weights to all of these interests and then come up with a formula that then best serves the country. So, so everything the Deputy President has been saying, take it to CRA? Yeah. Okay, uh, Honorable Koech, what's your take? Because th this appears like it's almost even uh, fragmenting um, the top of the administration. You see, the, the, the President is a symbol of national unity. The presidency then so should be a symbol of national unity. It could be a valid debate. It could not be a valid debate. But the person should, advancing that debate should not be the stature of my boss, the deputy uh, president. Let me tell you, it is an extremely uh, dangerous debate. Mm -hmm. Because I'll, ask, I'll tell you that, number one, if you go that route, then what will deny another proponent to say that since you're saying one man, one shilling, one vote, then let us also go to the same population and say, for instance, Kakamega, which has a population of 1.8 million, mm -hmm. and Moranga, which has a population of 1 million, then why will Moranga have two CSS, for instance, uh, with a population of 1 million, and Kakamega, which has a population of 1.8 million, have no CS at all? Or Kericho County, where I come from, with a population of 900,000, uh, uh, and Tarakanidi, which has a population of 400,000, and the other one having two ministers and one minister in that. A minister's uh, resources. Yeah, so it, it, no, because someone will go further. I mean, if you want to leave to the true meaning of that one million, one shilling, it is very, very unfortunate. Number two, mm. we must be very thankful to God, especially the communities that have, have, have been in power and have had the position to be, uh, you know, to, God has granted them position to lead this country. The, Kikuyu and Kalenjin community, for instance, have mm. had the seat of presidency for more than 56 years against the other 42 tribes of this country. In those positions, they have had an advantage of, you know, either deliberately or inadvertently having uh, development in their regions mm -hmm. uh, than the other regions. So for those communities, for instance, today to sit and conspire against the community of Dr. Uh, Dr. here, it is totally unfair and sickening that we can actually think of that. As a country, we want to have one nation. We want to speak as one voice. We cannot have bottom-up ethnic tribalization better. Let us have bottom-up economic transformation agenda. That is what this country needs. So without necessarily referring to the, the deputy president and he's you know, entitled to his... Uh, his, his debate and his, 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 his wish, it is my respectful view that it should not come from the stature of the person of uh, deputy president. Number two, he's the deputy president of a country. As Kenya Kwanza, he came in with this administration knowing so well that we had, the BBI has been lost, had been lost in court. Mm -hmm. The people of Mount Kenya and <coughs> the people of Kenya in general voted for this government well knowing that they did not have the BBI components in their manifesto. To reintroduce it then is to say, let us go back to BBI, and it was correct after all. Yet we spent so many uh, days and time trying to fight it. In my view, it is unnecessary, it is divisive, and it is ill-advised. What is the impact of this on the relationship between the president and the deputy? They, they have been together. I mean, you saw them in Akuru the other day. I don't think there is any issue with that. Um, They're still it should good be. friends. I don't know. I wouldn't. I can't speak about the relationship between the president and the deputy president. 
Um, I'm just like you. I I no, I, read, not. I, <laughs> I read I read the list. I read the messages. <laughs> but there should not be an issue. Like uh, William Ruta, the president, did, okay. uh, confessed during his wedding that he will not uh, subject his deputy president to what he was subjected to when he was the deputy president. I think we leave the that. second anniversary will be on September 13th. Um, <laughs> We'll see about that. I want us to take a look at something as we close. Um, let's put it on screen uh, because uh, Dr. Makali Mundu said something about equality and equity. It's behind you. Um, so there are some uh, three gentlemen there, okay. mm. or, or future gentlemen. Yes. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can see what equality is. Everyone gets the same share, uh, same size of the stool. Whether you are the father, the first son, or the second son, you get the same size of the stool. But when you're uh, deploying equity, yes. so then you give two stools to the smallest, mm. a stool to the first son, and the father can stand and still watch the game. Exactly. Equality versus equity. equity. Yeah. And uh, that is not mine. We are not that creative. Um, <laughs> it is by Interaction Institute for Social Change. Um, mm. We just got it uh, from them. I have to thank you so much. Um, uh, Nelson Koech, uh, Alex Kanye as well as Dr. Makali Mulu for making time for the rest of this conversation. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Coach, we survived. Um, <laughs> <laughs> an important week it is. Uh, the budget will be read on Thursday, and uh, very soon, probably next week, we should hear on what the Finance and Planning Committee will be recommending to the House as their report. But that report will not be final, because Parliament, where the two gentlemen sit, will have the final word on what becomes part of our tax laws in the country. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.